Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Ari Lax and this week I'm going to be recording with a bit of an interesting deck. Um, so this was featured in a Ross Merriam deck digest a week or two ago um, and it is a Swans of Bryn Argyll deck uh, by Kevin Lonergan. He finished second at an Invitational Qualifier with this deck. And it's interesting because typically, so the, the idea with Swans is that uh, it's historically been broken by creating a loop where you convert some resource into damage and then more cards and you can convert cards to that resource and, you know, loop. So typically it's like Seismic Assault plus Swans, um, just some repeated way to continue dealing a damage, draw more cards and turn those cards into damage. Um, but this deck is a very traditional blue-red tempo deck um, that's trying to use Swans as both a threat and a way to convert dead removal into additional cards and get somewhere. Uh, so breaking it down, we've got card selection. Um, I've made some changes to Kevin's list. He only played two Serum Visions and played two Anticipate. I'm, I'm just not doing that in Modern. I'm playing all the one drops I can. I I want nothing to do with uh, Anticipating over Serum Visioning. Uh, this card is just too good and probably one of the best cards in the format. Um, and then Snapcaster is selection in the sense that it lets you select cards out of the graveyard uh, and re reapply already existing threats um the list that kevin played only had three again i think these are just like the most powerful cards you could be playing in this kind of archetype in the format so i'm just going to max out on them uh kevin had a main deck blood moon but i think that with the way the metagame is going i'd rather cyborg blood moon in the specific matchup and not kind of try to mice people so that ended up being the cut um the counter suite we got a couple mana leaks they get dead going late a couple stubborn denials to go with the swans some remands uh, I have a negate. There used to be three stubborn denials, um, but I just didn't like the idea of drawing multiple stubborn denials without a swan, so I've trimmed to an actual spell that has an impact 100% of the time. We've got some cryptics and some spell snares. Um, it's worth noting that the mana base for this deck is significantly worse than your typical blue red deck. You are lighter on fetch lands and therefore heavier on snow mountains because you need snow mountains that you actually fetch mountains to spread people with. Um, so that's the issue with Cryptic Command here. Uh, there's, I think the mana... One of my concerns is I think that the mana base is a little sketchy. Um, I think that it could be improved, but there's this tipping point where, you know, how often are you fetching steam vents versus how often is that making your screds terrible? So we'll have to see on that. As for removal, we've got some Anger of the Gods as just a generally powerful effect in this format right now. Then eight one-drop removal spells, which is one of the draws to this deck, Scred and Lightning Bolt. Um, and then we got Swans as our kind of combo finisher. You can Scred your Swans, draw a million cards, win the game. And there's also a Vendillion Click, another good blue-red card. And a card I kind of skimmed over is Disrupting Shoal. Um, pretty important in protecting your Swans of Bryn Argol when you tap a lot of mana on your main phase for it. Uh, you don't want a ton, but your deck can also override the card disadvantage by using swans as a draw engine. Uh, moving to the sideboard, I have moved, uh, Kevin had two blood moons in his sideboard and a echoing truth. Um, I'm just not going to play echoing truth in a blue red deck like this that really plays a lot of card exchange games. I understand that my blue red deck is going to be dead to some permanence if they resolve. I'd rather just not let them end up on the battlefield. Um, Dispel, just generally powerful card, mirrors, click as well, also good against combo, also just good at trading for stuff, just does a lot of work, um, a way to kind of round out the deck in terms of threats. Harvest Pyre, you do not have access to a uh, third color, you don't really have a hard removal spell, you're not really going to play Dismember, so this lets you scale up and do that in a bit faster time frame than Scred does. Blood Moon, just lock people out with our you know 15 basic land deck. An extra anger to mop things up, a shatterstorm against artifact decks, a bunch of big threats to overpower other mid-range decks. I'm not huge on Batter Skull, but I'm coming back around to it with the switch from Jun to Abzan, uh, making uh, Kologon's Command a less prevalent card in the format. Um, six mana is still a little expensive for Warm Coil too. Like the jump from five to six is kind of a big deal. Pithenial is just a generic answer. Again, I did list the fact that we are soft to artifacts and enchantments because we are blue-red. Pithenial helps shore up some of that. Um, Counterflux for uh, fighting against decks like Scapeshift, uh, where you're just trying to hit their big counter card, and you might not be able to win a counter war against them if they're going hard, but 
you've got a counterflux so they lose. And then a spell skite against all sorts of, you know, spell skite's just like a generically fine sideboard card. It's not going to be bad. Um, and one other thing I'd like to point out, there is a scrying sheets in the deck. I think it is a worse card than Desolate Lighthouse, but again, this is a case of you want every land you play to be a snow land to maximize scred. Um, so it is fine, but really just uh, not the most powerful card on its own, but in terms of the synergies, does enough more than the lands you're already playing that it deserves a slot. So I'm interested to see how this one pans out and whether the actual Swans engine um, helps the deck overpower anything that it uh, couldn't already handle.